In this video, we'll be connecting VT SCADA to an Allen Bradley PLC using SIP. All right, to start things off, we're gonna create a new application in VT SCADA. And to do that, I just click on the hamburger menu and click add new application. Here I can name my application, call that SIP demo. And we can go next and start the application. And while the application is loading, just a quick note on the uh, SIP protocol. So SIP stands for Common Industry Protocol. And the Common Industry Protocol is a communication protocol used in industrial automation systems. It defines a set of rules and formats for exchanging data between devices. So in summary, devices using the Common Industry Protocol, or SIP, know the type of data sent through the use of the type code that is included with each data item. The type code specifies the data type according to a predefined set. However, there is flexibility for device manufacturers to create their own types. So while both Rockwell uh, and Omron use SIP as the underlying protocols for many of their PLCs, there are some differences in how they've implemented SIP. So each vendor may support different subsets of these data types or use their own proprietary data types. For example, Rockwell Automation uses the term D word to refer to a 32 pit unsigned integer, while Omron uses the term word. So as we uh, connect to this, you'll notice that we're using the Rockwell driver and not a generic SIP driver. And that's because each of these PLC manufacturers hasn't actually created uh, an interchangeable exchange using the SIP protocol. So each one of them is customized enough that uh, the SIP driver that we're using is specific to Rockwell PCs. So now that we've got our application up, let's start the configuration. First thing, we're gonna fire up the tag browser. And whenever you're starting to a new connection, it's nice to put that into a container. So we'll just start off with the containers and we'll create a context tag and we'll say SIP demo PLC. And in the description, we'll do SIP demo. Okay. And inside of that, let's create a new child tag. And the child tag that we're going to select will be the port tag. So we click on here. We're going to connect using TCP IP port. And here we'll call it. Uh, PLC port and AB PLC port. So in the connection here, we'll just put in the address. So that's going to be 10.158.5.12 and the port number. And if you're not sure, it's like for SIP connection, it's probably going to be uh, 44818. And if you're unsure about this, you can just hit F1 and you'll see a list here of common ports. So you see there, Allen Bradley SIP 44818. But this can be really useful for all kinds of different PLCs if you're unsure of what the port number that they typically use. Okay, so we're just going to say okay to that. And then now, um, sometimes you can make this a sibling, but in this case, let's just make it a child. So we're gonna go back to here, say new child, and this time we're gonna create our driver. So we'll click the drivers go down to the bottom and the Rockwell driver. So this is going to be control logics PLC. We'll just call it that. We'll call it one and CL1 for the description. So in the configuration, this is really where we select everything. So in the first, the drop down, you can see the PLC mode. So we've got the compact and control logics with logical addressing. We can do that with instance symbolic addressing or symbolic addressing. If you look down here, the micro 820, 850s only support the symbolic addressing. So that's kind of important because there are some differences in what uh, features you can use and also the efficiency of the PLCs um, transmitting data. So we're connecting to a control logics today but you can see here there's all kinds of other types of plcs in this driver that you can use but again we're using sip so we're going to select the control logics now the port segment path this is something that if you've got a newer plc you basically will just 
um, take out this uh, one and zero, just put in the brackets there with nothing in it. This is a little bit older processor, so uh, one zero should work well. And then the SIP connection target, basically uh, you can choose the way that you've got your uh, PLC configured. Now, one of the great things about this is if you want some more information on this, we won't get into it today, you can just hit F1 and this will take you right into the help files for this PLC. And you can see here, there's all kinds of information about the port segment path, how to define it, as well as a bunch of examples here, um, as well as the SIP connection target. So if you read through that, then you shouldn't have a problem. So we're gonna leave that the way that it is for this PLC in the communications here, make sure that your port is connected to your port. So in this case, I'm looking at the parent port and you can see the IAB PLC port there. If that wasn't the case, then you could just click on this tag and that would open up a window and you would just point to your port tag pointing to the PLC. So that's about it. If we were doing DF1, we'd have a little bit more to look at over here, but we're doing SIP today, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay. So we'll just give it a minute because right now it's actually downloading the information from the PLC. So we're getting that list of tags um, that are in the PLC. So while we wait for that to load, one important thing about using symbolic addressing is that if you are writing data without reading it, so if you read data in, then VT SCADA will understand what that data type is. Um, we talked about that earlier with SIP, but if you're just writing data, then you need to put in the data suffix to tell VT SCADA how to send that data to the PLC. So it needs to know if it's a floating point, if it's an integer, if it's a double, if it's a binary value, whatever that is. Um, it's important to define that. If you do just bring the data in, if you read the data even just one time, then the driver will understand what that address is expecting. But if you're purely writing, they say make sure to put in that um, data type. And if you want in the help files, you can just search for data suffix to get the different data types. Okay, so we've given it a little bit of time. Hopefully it's downloaded all of the um, tags. So with the uh, PLC tag selected here, we can click this import button. You'll see if I deselect or if I select something that isn't the tag, this goes gray. But if I select that PLC tag, I get this import button. So we'll click that. We're gonna get the list of all the tags in the PLC. So you can see here, there's all kinds of stuff in there. And in this case, let's just take the tags in this test message box and we'll say okay to that. And here we go. So now we've got all those tags in test message. You can see they're all configured. We've got analogs, digitals. If we open them up, then we can look at the data. We can see here that they're all set up for us with the addresses and everything in it. Um, in the analogs, it is important to note that we're not gonna have those scaling values set up and you're not gonna have parts of the high performance like your min and max and expected range set up um, because that isn't available in the PLC. So you will have to, a little bit of work to do, but for the most part, your work is done here. And you can see here, we're even receiving values and we can go into these. We're all connected into the historian and everything right now. So we can go right here and plot those values. So let's go back to 30 seconds and you can see that value is very static, but you can see it right there on the screen. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, feel free to give us a like, or if you have questions, let us know in the comments below. And if you'd like to learn more about VT Skater or connecting to different types of devices, then please check out the VT Skater Academy. It's online, it's free, and you can go through it at your own pace. I'll put a link to the VT Skate Academy up above and in the video description.